the cool thing about flex space is because you are buying or because you're leasing rather uh, essentially a box, right? You can do so many different things in there. We've seen personal training camps come up there. We've seen dog training facilities come into flex space. We've seen swimming pool schools go into flex space, uh, batting cages, soccer field. Uh, I've seen a skydiving facility that was built in a flex space, right? And the reason they're able to do all of this is because they are able to customize and take all of the, that blank canvas and build it to their desired need. You can't do that with an office. Utilities are in a certain location. You know, you have to have bathrooms here. Very restricted. Um, and you just don't have the ability to run unique businesses out of those type of operations. You can do that with a flex space. This is what we are looking at. In fact, today, we see businesses that do exactly that. They service the business. So I will lease out an empty shell. There'll be another business that'll come in, cut it up to warehouse or cut it up to, depending on how much office space they need, cut it up to, if there's a training facility, they'll put turf in certain locations. They'll put jungles, you know, those jungle gyms in certain locations. There's so much stuff that you can do with the flex space that you just can't do with other asset classes, which is why I think that is where all the cool businesses are. Number one, uh, which is why I see all future entrepreneurs leasing flex spaces. And look, if there's high demand in leasing, guess what? The institutional guys are going to come in and they're going to be like, shit, this asset class is doing really good. We want to invest. That's going to create high demand in buyers as well. So not only now do you have high demand in tenants, you have high demand with buyers just because there's a high demand in tenants in flex spaces. And it's only a matter of time until that happens.